Let's next look at the layers of the eye, the eye itself. So there are three layers to the eye, okay? So let's, let's draw it. So we have the most external layer is called your fibrous tunic. That's the outer part, the part you, part you can see. Okay. So your fibrous, so layers are tunics of the eye. Your fibrous tunic has two parts to it. Okay. The most posterior part, again, the, the, the white part of the eye, it actually starts in the back of the eye. That's called a sclera. So you have your sclera, and towards the front, the sclera becomes transparent to form your cornea. So the fibrous tunic has a sclera and a cornea. The cornea is the part that you put your contact lens on, okay? So this part is transparent, which means it allows for light to enter the eye. So light will come in this way from outside and pass through the cornea to enter the eye. If light came and hits, whatever light that hits your sclera, that part can't be seen. It must come and go through the clear, transparent part to enter the eye. So this, so this won't go through, it must go, instead go through the, the cornea. The sclera's job mostly is to anchor the muscles. Okay, the muscles of, that move the eye around. The muscles like your lateral rectus, inferior rectus, superior rectus muscles, all those six eye muscles or attached to the sclera to move the eye around in its orbit. Okay, so that's the outermost tunic, the fibrous tunic, tunic, again, containing the sclera and the cornea. We go one layer deeper, what we call your vascular tunic. So here, the vascular tunic. This part, is, vascular means, means blood vessels. So here, on, the, on this tunic, you'll have the most posterior part come, coming in from the back here. All the way toward the front. This part is called your choroid. So the choroid, that's a highly vascular rod, I mean, there's a lot of blood vessels there. And these blood vessels provides nutrients, nourishment for the inner, especially the inner cell layer, okay? So this is nourishment, nutrients for inner cell layers. And so nutrients provided by the choroid. And towards the front, the choroid turns into what we call a ciliary apparatus. Your ciliary apparatus. It's so a choroid. You have ciliary apparatus. And that apparatus has two parts to it. The part called the ciliary process. I think it's called, it's called ciliary body. Create new, new words here. Ciliary body contains a ciliary process and a ciliary muscle. Okay. The process part of the ciliary body makes a fluid called aqueous humor. And the muscle, its job is to anchor your lens. So here, the muscle part is attached to some strings called zonules or suspensory ligaments. These are your zonules. And those zonules are attached to this crystal-like structure in the eye called the lens. These are, these are your zonules, or also called your suspensory ligaments. They anchor the lens to your ciliary muscle, okay? And then continuing with the, still the, the outer layer, 
the as you pass the ciliary body, you then come to another structure called the iris. It's also part of a layer. So you have, you have choroid ciliary body and the iris. Those are, those are the three parts of the vascular layer. Now the iris here, let's erase some stuff here. The iris, which is this, is a muscle that controls an opening. So, so the gap between the iris, it's a, it's, a, it's a circular muscle like this in the eye, as you can see, and in the middle of it is a hole. That hole in the middle of the iris is your pupil. Okay. And the job of the iris is to control the, the pupil diameter. So let, let's draw it here. So again, this is your eye. And this is the circular iris, like so. It has two muscles in it. One muscle will make the pupil, which is the hole in the middle of it, small. That muscle will kind of push the, this way, push this way to make the pupil small, okay? That muscle of the iris is called the pupillary constrictor muscle. So this job is to constrict that, the pupil. That way, less light comes into the eye. And then the other muscle of the iris Again, this is your iris here. That other muscle, its job is to make the pupil big. So that muscle will pull the iris this way to widen the pupil. Okay. So that one is called your pupillary dilator muscle and the, so, 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 the, so the iris is basically two muscles together that control the diameter of the pupil it either make it constricted or, di or dilated depending on what, what what's going on for example if you in an emergency it is bigger so you can see more when you relax it is smaller okay the, the pupil does so, so that's ir iris's job and then the third layer we have is the layer called the retina so we've done the fibrous layer, the vascular layer. Now we'll do the retina. That's the innermost tunic. Here's the retina. So the retina has some parts to it. It has Two layers, an outer layer, and we'll I can discuss this later on. So, for now, the retina is in the most layer, which contains your cells, the cells that respond to light. So this part is the part that responds to light to produce vision, which we'll discuss shortly. Also on the retina is an area here called the aura serrata. The aura serrata here, aura serrata, is a borderline that, that separates the part of the retina that has cells that respond to light and the part that does not, okay? So the, the retina goes all the way to the front still, covering everything up here, but as some border area, you stop having cells that, that can respond to light. That's in front of the aura serrata. Behind it, here, is said to be photoresponsive, okay, behind the retina, behind the aura serrata. Okay, while, we, while we're here, so the retina eventually exits the eye. The, the neurons in the retina will, will exit the eye in an area in the back of the eye called your optic disc, okay? I'll put this there 
and from the upper disc, the, 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 the neurons that leave, they form your optic nerve, all right? So that's the eye in a nutshell. Um, let's do one more thing before we, we, we go, back, go back to the retina and to, to discuss that more, more fully. In the eye, as is, is drawn right here, we can also divide it into chambers and cavities, okay? So let's, let's do it real quickly. So, get rid of this stuff here. I mean, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a recorder, so you can always pause and get what you need, okay? So, the eye like that. The, from the lens here to the cornea, this entire part, from lens to cornea, that part we call your anterior cavity of the eye. The anterior cavity. And that cavity has two chambers. So from the cornea to the iris, this front chamber is called the anterior chamber of the anterior cavity and from the lens to the iris this other one here is called the posterior chamber of the anterior cavity and in the entire anterior cavity so again these two chambers are part of the anterior cavity it is filled with filled with aqueous humor so here is where you find your aqueous humor. That's the fluid that bathes the, the anterior cavity, the fluid inside here. And while we hear the aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary process. So, so if we track aqueous humor, then it's made here by the ciliary process, pushed up through the posterior chamber runs through the pupil to enter the anterior chamber and then exits the anterior cavity through an opening. Okay, call your scleral venous sinus. Also call your canal schlem, okay? That's the canal that drains the aqueous humor. So, so it's built from blood, the filter from blood, push in, circulate, and drain out. So it's always been being refreshed, being pushed out and, 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 and made it made that new. So that's the path of aqueous humor. Again, it begins in the cellular process, gets secreted through the posterior chamber, then enters the pupil to go into the anterior chamber, then drains through an, a structure called the scleral venous sinus, also called your canal schlem. Now the posterior part here, from the lens to the back of the eye, this part, here is called your posterior cavity, okay? And that cavity is filled with another gel-like material. This one is called your vitreous humor. And that gel has the job of keeping the eye in shape. It's, it's, you know, it does, it's not really like compressible, so the eye keeps its shape that way. And this gel stays with you for a lifetime. Aqueous is always made fresh daily. This one is from birth to death. Same, same gel in, in the back of the eye. Okay, we'll pause there.